Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our last video we talked about how to pass information into a method or a function not just by passing it by value but actually passing it by reference. In other words, giving a memory location for the function to manipulate, uh, it allows the function to kind of pass information back to the program that called it. So in other words, I have this ability to directly access memory and so I want to explore that a little bit more today. So I'm going to create a file. We're going to go ahead and call this uh, pointers.cpp. I'm going to go ahead and save this. We're going to do our usual fare of include IO stream and using namespace standard and I'm going to do my int main. We're not going to have any functions in this, um, but what I do want to do is create some variables. So I'm going to go ahead and create an int a gets 5, a b gets 7, uh, c gets 10, and d gets 14. So I've created four variables, and if I go ahead and print these out with a space between them, A C, insertion operator in a space, insertion operator D, and end line. This is going to give us some pretty traditional fare, exactly what we expected. So if I do a G++ pointers.cpp dash out pointers.exe and run pointers, then it's going to print out the values exactly as I expected. What I can do is I could also declare some pointer variables. Now if I want to do that though, what's important for me is that I have to treat these pointer variables different from ints because they're not ints, they're memory locations. And depending on your system architecture, they could use up more than four bytes to directly allocate this. Right now I'm running on a 64-bit machine, but because I'm using the Cloud9 uh, IDE, the online IDE, maybe it expands to an even larger memory space. So I'm dealing with integer pointers, and the way that I create variables for these integer pointers is I have to put an asterisk before them. So I'm going to create this variable called PA, which is a pointer to A, and it's going to be equal to whatever the memory address of A is. And I'm going to create a pointer called PB, and it's going to be equal to whatever the memory address of B is. I'm going to create a pointer C PC, which goes to the memory address of C. And I'm going to create a pointer PD, which is going to be equal to the memory address of variable D. And so if I see out PA, and then PB, and then PC, and then PD. And I run this program exactly the same way as I did before. Then notice what I've got here is I've got four different memory positions. And more than that, because these four memory positions were all kind of created at the same time on the same line of code, they're going to be successive memory positions. Notice that this memory address ends in 2,0. This memory address is 4 bytes advanced, so this is 2,4. This memory location is 4 bytes advanced, so it's 2,8. And this memory is actually 4 bytes as well. I've got 2C. Remember that C is 12 in hexadecimal, and we talked about that in our previous video. So these four variable positions, they're ints, so they're 4 bytes, and their offset is exactly the same. In other words, the next variable starts right where the first variable ends. The third variable starts where the second variable ends. And so that's rather interesting. Later on in today's lesson, we're going to talk about that with different variable types. But I want to try something else here. I'm going to go back up to my code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do PA++. And I'm going to do the same thing for PB and PC, and for PD. And then I'm going to copy this line of code where I'm printing out those variables. Now, when I print ints, and when I increment ints, it advances to the next integer. 
But because these are memory pointers and they're pointing to an int, they're pointing to a four byte wide segment of memory. If I increment the pointers, I'm actually pointing to the next position an int could be. So if I save this and run this, I'm going to find out that all of these memory positions are actually offset four bytes, including the last one, because the last one is offset four bytes as well. So that would be D, E, F, and the number that follows F in hexadecimal. F is 15, the number that follows it is 16, and the odometer effect happens. I move to the 16's place and add one to it. Now, it's interesting because what I'm actually pointing to are the subsequent memory positions. So if I were to create an integer variable called DA, which is equal to the pointer PA, in other words, where pointer PA is pointing to, and int DB, which is pointing to where DB is pointing to, and int DC, which is pointing to where DC is pointing to, then if I were to go out here and print out DA and print out DB, and print out DC, then what I'm going to find out is that I am now pointing at, these variables are now pointing at, oops, what did I do wrong? Should those have been the memory locations? I think those should have been the memory locations instead. No, not the memory locations, those should have been, oh, I'm an idiot. Those should have been P's. So those do need to be stars. And this is supposed to be the memory pointer. In other words, I want the integer value that's in the memory location. And so it was telling me it had no idea what to do with star by itself to itself. That's what it was having problems with. So let me go ahead and recompile this and rerun this. So notice now that P, excuse me, DA is pointing to the value that B has. DB is pointing to the value that B has. And DC is pointing to the value that C has. It's interesting. I wonder where DD is pointing to. In other words, if I was to set DD equal to the pointer PD and then print out its result, after I print out a space, I'm curious where that would be pointing to. Hmm, interesting. The thing is, what I'm actually pointing to over here is rather unpredictable. We're not sure exactly what could be in here. It happens to be a coincidence that it's equal to this value of 7, but I will tell you that I've run this program before, and the value that I get over here is going to be one of these values. I'm not sure where. I've run the program where I've gotten 7, 10, 14, 14. And I've run the program where I've gotten 7, 10, 14, 10. In other words, I'm not going to get something predictable because I'm actually pointing to a new memory location. If I was to copy this line of code and print out the memory locations, in other words, if I was to print out the address of DA and the address of DB and the address of DC and the address of DD, what you will find when I compile this and run this is that these memory addresses here are not the same as the memory addresses here. In actuality, they're offset because I've created these first four integer positions first, and then immediately afterwards, no, not immediately, but the next variables that are created are these integer variables, and they happen to follow that next incremented area of memory. And of course, the result of this memory right here is unknown. I have no idea what I should assign there because this PD has been incremented from some place. So it's interesting. Um, so what I want to do with the last bit of this program is I kind of want to talk about the different data types. One of the things that we notice is that integers are four bytes long. Integers contain four bytes of data. And so these memory offsets are all four bytes off when I increment. So what I want to do is I want to see what happens when I create a short. So let's go ahead and say short s and then I'll do a short pointer ps which is going to get the memory address of s.
And then I want to set up a loop here. So for int i gets 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus. And I want to do a couple of things here. I want to see out ps and a space. And then I want to ps plus plus. In other words, increment the pointer. And then I want to go ahead and see out an end line afterwards just for simplicity's sake. But if I run this, then what I'm going to notice is that this address is 4.2, this address is 4.4, this address is 4.6, this address is 4.8, this address is 4.10, because A is 10 in hexadecimal. Because shorts only take up two bytes, all of these offsets incrementing the pointer is going to add 2 to it. If I were to change this to a long and make this a long pointer, then compiling and running, I'm going to see the offset here is 8 bytes. And so I'm adding 8 each time to these long variables. If I was to make this a long double and make this a long double pointer, compile and run, I know that long doubles actually take up 16 bytes of memory. And so each of these are offset to the next memory location by adding 16 bytes. And the last example that I want to do today is see what happens when I make these bools. Now, technically a boolean should only be one bit because it's either a zero or a one. But memory address, memory is addressed in terms of bytes. And so the next byte that I could possibly increment would be one more byte ahead. And so I'll notice that these bytes, BB3, BB4, BB5, BB6, BB7, those bytes are all one byte away from each other. Now, there's one primitive that I have left out, and there's one concept that I've left out, and that's char and string. Those are a much more peculiar behavior. And we'll actually talk about those in our next video. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.